Somebody desires that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should strengthen the power of his memory, should increase his capacity of memory to remember things, to retain things, that it should get stronger and more. If somebody desires that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthens the vision of his eyes, the visibility of his eyes, and if somebody desires that his physical deficiencies and illnesses which start from, for example, the mouth that Allah Ta'ala eliminates those diseases and Allah Ta'ala fixes the illnesses of the face or the eyes and the teeth. And if somebody desires that his deeds, worship gets uh, accepted and that they are multiplied 70 times over and if somebody desires that when it's his final moments in life, and he's about to depart from this world, that he gets the kalima on his tongue. And when somebody goes, that if he, if he dies, he desires that on departing, Allah is pleased with him. Then there's a sunnah, there's one sunnah, if we implement that, the reward of that will give you all of these things. What is that sunnah? Very beloved sunnah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and that is to do the miswak. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. As Abi Musa radiallahu anhu stated this in a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. He said that I saw the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was doing the miswak, performing the miswak, and he was very occupied in doing the miswak. He was so occupied, so busy in the miswak. He was engaged. He was immersed, thoughtful, that whilst he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing the miswak, then on his blessed face, from his blessed mouth, the noise was also coming. Or, or you know, the, the actual effects of doing the miswak. With intensity, he was doing the miswak. So in other words, his miswak, the action of doing miswak was such that even the Prophet was moving around physically inside of the mouth, inside the mouth, all four sides, all four corners of the mouth. In the same way, as a Hudayfa radiallahu anhu narrated, I saw the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that when he would get up from his bed, immediately first and foremost, the first action he'd do is that he'd go towards his miswak. And as Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu anha stated that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa was so regular in miswak that before doing anything, he'd do miswak. Coming into the home, he'd do miswak story. Before departing, he'd do the miswak. This was how kathir and regular was this amal, great action, and Allah gave such great rewards for miswak. The biggest reward is that person, when he departs from the world, he is given the ability to recite the kalama. Can there be a bigger reward than this? A person departs this world and recites the kalama shahada. And when a person, uh, before he prays salah, if he does miswak in the hadith, is stated that 70 times m- the multiplication occurs of that, s- the thua, the reward. And that, for example, a salah that you already gain, sorry, not 70, it's 27 times extra reward. If the salah increases, then will that salah not be accepted? Won't it? It's guaranteed. Your ibadah is accepted with the fadl of Allah. Allah will accept it. And such a great amal deed of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, miswak. That when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi was departing from this world towards Allah, when he was going to, uh, when he was, uh, the, the, the final moments, Hazrat Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu anha said that, bring me a fresh piece of miswak. And then the miswak was brought, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi couldn't do it himself, he couldn't prepare himself. This was the hikmah of Allah, the wisdom of Allah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi gave the miswak to Hazrat Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu anha that, chew on it, soften it, give it to me. And she was proud all her life long. She was so proud that subhanAllah that I was given this great, great um, opportunity, the status that from all the azwaj, all the wives, I got this opportunity that the, when the Prophet ﷺ was departing this world that mine and his saliva, it met. 
Subhanallah, such a great action, such a great memory. So we need to be very uh, uh, strongly and regularly we should do amal on this miswag. There are many virtues, many, many virtues and we get lazy on this. We are lazy and negligent always. Miswag should be with us for wudu. When we wake up, we should do miswak. Before we sleep, we should do miswak. Before we get up in the morning, we should do miswak. Before we do dhikr, we should do miswak. Before reading Quran, we should do miswak. There's a hadith that if somebody wants that his eyes become enlightened, strong vision, there are two meanings of the hadith of the Quran and the one is reality and one is spiritually. The reality the people of reality go towards reality, the others go towards spirituality, and the Sufi Kram they go deep. So it's stated that the benefit that we can see is this, that they looked at it in the light, the angle of Ma'rif, that the eyes become stronger, enlightened. This doesn't mean that just here in the world your eyes get stronger. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enlighten his heart, make his heart so enlightened that the Ma'rif of the Qur'an, he will start to understand the inner depth meaning of the Qur'an. He'll start understanding big, big points and he'll start entering into those points. He'll understand those points. So brothers, we should do dua to Allah. We should try. And also this, that maybe uh, we are under this sort of misconception uh, that it's for the men folk, not for the women. And I think maybe, for example, men folk do miswak. Maybe very few women indeed keep their miswak in the purse, in the handbag. They have lots of things and creams, etc. But they don't have miswak. Yes, and for the beauty of the akhirah, they should have this put the miswak in your purse, in your handbag. You don't know where the, the evening could take place in the night. At least, for example, maybe you, uh, the, the sun may set on our lives any time. So at least we can utilize the miswak. Just like our brothers put the miswak in their pockets. Women may not have pockets, but their handbags are very nice. So one make one section in which you put your miswak. And prepare for it. And uh, the, these actions are both for men and for the women. Sisters and brothers. Another point here. Oh, I don't have teeth. Some people say, I don't have any teeth. If, you, if I don't have teeth, they take points out. Lots of people make excuses and points. How can I do miswak? I am excused. I said, oh, if you don't have teeth, then you have gums, don't you? That if you can chew your food with the gums, then can you not utilize miswak? So, oh, well, what we should do, firstly, is that if you do miswak with this niya, then your teeth will never get spoilt. Your teeth will never get spoilt. Because Allah Ta'ala has put shifa and cure in the miswak. The dentists, even they will fail. The people of miswak, their teeth will be able to give fadl and blessings and focus on the miswak with love, be regular. We should all try to do it. Rather, this is the amal of one sunnah. Then imagine what will be the glory of all of the sunnahs of the Prophet Sallallahu Remember one thing in life, that every action of the Prophet Sallallahu do it in all the actions of your life according to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا المرسلين شفيعنا المرسلين تهاون سيدنا العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد نبينا وزوجه المعظمين وزوجاته وأنبياءه